Hi Global Studies, today's very short video is just going to be about how to use a section of our Global Studies Department website to help you be on top of registering for classes, planning for registration, kind of knowing everything that will help you make the best um, choices possible when it comes to your schedule each quarter and some troubleshooting and some tips for kind of what to think about um, if you are looking for other options besides Global Studies Department classes to fill your schedule. So one of the biggest places I recommend you get familiar with when you are thinking about planning your schedule each quarter is to actually just go to our department website. So if you go to global.ucsb.edu and then um, we have our main page here, you're going to be focusing mostly on the undergraduate tab, but feel free to explore just to get some information about the um, department in general. So we'll go to undergraduate. This is kind of a one-stop shop for some information about all of our undergraduate programs. It is still under construction. We're adding new things here and there um, as time goes on, but um, it's just a good place to know anytime you have questions about the major, you very likely will be able to find access to some answers here. Uh, so at the top of the page just has some information about the history of the major and kind of its structure, things that are required as part of it overall. Uh, and then we have some questions to help you decide and think about whether or not it's the right major for you. Going down a little bit further, we're going to start seeing some resources related to advising. So over here on the blue side, you're going to see some information uh, about how to contact an advisor and sort of the best ways to do so um, by email and then the best ways and times for um, scheduling either appointments or looking for drop-in hours. Uh, obviously, during a campus closure like we're experiencing during 2020, most things are going to be held online or um, over email, but once campus opens back up again, that will change. Um, uh, over here on the left side, or excuse me, on the right side, you're also going to have some access to some information about like frequently asked questions that a lot of students ask related to global studies, and then just some other links that are useful here at the bottom. We're actually going to pay most of our attention today to the registration resources page. This is going to be the best place for you to go anytime you have questions about planning your schedule. So basically, big news at the top. Um, I will try to always keep this updated with whatever you might have questions about. Right now, the big question is, um, you know, for what, for how much longer are classes going to be held online? If you're watching this video in the future, hopefully that is no longer the case. Uh, but this, for example, fall 2020, we can confirm that global studies courses at least will all be held online for fall 2020 and sort of some things to think about with that. Uh, but even when classes aren't held online, this will give you some information about um, planning your schedule in a way that will make sense for you. So uh, there's gonna be some links to the overall registration calendar and pastimes section of the UCSB registrar's office uh, website. They are gonna have some pretty useful information for you on like when you have to be registering by, what's the first day of the quarter, um, what are all the little deadlines within each quarter where you need to um, be aware of like when you can drop a class, when you can drop a class, uh, but it's a little bit later, so you have to pay a fee, and then what would be the last day to change your grading option, all of that kind of stuff. So that's just a good thing to know that it exists so that you can look those up. Uh, and then there's going to be some links to the um, College of Letters and Science website has put together some instructional videos about how to use gold to uh, make gold work for, for you and give you some extra tips about how to search for classes and how to find the right classes based on what you've already taken. Uh, now, some of the information that's contained in that those the videos on that page is also going to show up in some other resources I'm going to show you, but I always recommend if you just want a quick refresher on how to use gold uh, to help you find classes quickly and efficiently and effectively, that's a good place to look. Uh, my transfer students, I will always try to have posted our whatever was this year's um, orientation materials. Right now, since we're just about getting ready to start orientation again for 2020, we currently have the 2019 materials still up, slides, handouts, uh, but that will be posted once all of the transfer orientations are over. So even if you missed orientation or you need a refresher, you can go back here. So, a uh, big first section is basic schedule planning and registration help for our global study students. So I'm going to kind of walk you through some big and the bolded. We're going to see big um, frequently asked questions and then I'll have some resources for you. So one big thing that a lot of people are curious about is just how do I plan a schedule start to finish? What do I need to be thinking about? Um, how do I know what are the right classes for me? How do I actually decide which classes to take and when? So we actually do have a few links to our YouTube uh, channel. So I'm going to open this one up in the background. This, for example, will take you to a link to 
and mine always starts at wherever I last was watching the video or showing the video. Um, this will take you to our YouTube channel where we actually have a number of different topic videos and you're going to see they're kind of lengthy, um, but you can actually then go down into show more and then if you have a really specific question that you want to jump directly to, you can click these time links. Or if you're really not sure what your question is, or it's been a while since you have thought about this topic, it's not a bad idea just to watch the whole thing um, to get kind of the overall. So that would be, for example, the how to plan your global study schedule um, video. But if you go into our channel, you'll actually see all of the, on the, let me go to our playlist, you'll actually get to see all of our advising videos, which at this point has several. And this one will be, will be on there as well. So lots of different topics that you may have a question about. So good to know that that exists. Um, big question that comes up a lot is, can I make an appointment with an undergraduate advisor for a customized schedule plan? It would be really nice if we were able to do that for every single student in our major, but just time-wise, it does not make a lot of sense for us to um, make that happen. Uh, besides that, besides that issue of just not having enough time to you know, sit with everybody and make that customized schedule plan, is you actually want to be really good at checking your own major in GE progress check on gold. It's called the degree progress audit. You might see both terms kind of used interchangeable, interchangeably throughout different spots on the UCSB websites. Um, it's really important that you get very good at checking that and knowing what's in it and knowing when you see issues or problems and knowing how the classes you are taking line up with those requirements. Because if you miss something, strong probability is we as the advisors are not necessarily going to be on the lookout for it either. We try to find things as you're getting ready to graduate, but we don't always know um, if there's something that you're off track with until you come in or until you ask a question about something else. So it's really, really, really vital that you get used to um, checking that on your own regularly so that you can come to us and get clarified on any questions you might have. So um, the video that is linked right here will walk you through that. If you do the steps that are in this video and you're, you try it and you're still getting stuck or you're seeing some weird things in your major and GE progress check, absolutely reach out. Um, definitely with enough time to help you for planning your schedule so that we can get you what you need. So then another big question that comes up is which major requirements do I follow? Uh, because we currently have two different right now versions of the major still in play. We have the slightly older 2018 to 2019 requirements, as well as the newer, at least they were new last year, 2019 to 2020 and onwards requirements. Um, because of there, there being two of them, sometimes there's some confusion about which one is the right one for you. Uh, the basic breakdown is the 2018 and 2019 requirements are for anybody who was a continuing student in 2019 and 2020. Uh, and that included new junior transfers that started in fall 2019 and fall 2020. The 2019 to 2020 requirements are for new freshmen that started in fall 2019, since that would have been the version of the major in play when they started, and anybody beyond that, right? New freshmen starting in fall 2020 and 2021 and so on and so forth. Um, junior transfers who started in fall 2021 and beyond, you would also be looking at whatever is the current updated year version of um, these requirements. So if you actually click into them, you're going to get access to a PDF file just to kind of see the difference. Um, the front side will walk you through what the major requirements are, circled classes I always try to have for whatever is the next quarter that's coming so that you can make some quick choices uh, as you're building your schedule. You'll notice those 2019 to 2020 requirements are split with a pre-major and a preparation major for the major section. Uh, the, the other version is not. And then um, on the back side or on the second page of both of those documents is a suggested plan of study. This is just a really nice thing to consult whatever year you are in for, you know, across the different main academic quarters each year. These would be the suggestions that if you were to say, oh, uh, can I come in and help to have you help me plan a schedule? These are the kinds of things that I would, you know, talk you through when we would look at together. So these can help you as you look at your major in GE progress check. You can make some decisions about what you think you're ready to take and what it makes sense to be taking to be on track. So starting in fall 2023, if you're watching this video closer to that point, all students declaring the global studies major will need to start with the version of the major that has a pre-major. It'll look very similar to these 2019, 2020 requirements. It'll just be updated for whatever year we're currently in at that point. Uh, but at that point, the 2018 requirements will be completely retired and we will have moved on to them. 
So another question that comes up a lot is what if I'm taking a course that used to be included on a previous version of the major requirements, but now, you know, my junior or senior year, three or four years later, it's not on the current sheet. In most cases, we will still honor it as long as it fits within the same areas that it once, you know, belonged to. Um, mostly that just happens because the course might be older, might have been retired off the major sheet to make room for newer classes that will be taught more often. Uh, so in most cases, we can still accept it. Just know that your major and GE progress check might not pick it up automatically. So don't be worried if that's happening, um, if you're checking it and you're not seeing it go into that spot. Um, in most cases, we would just apply a pretty simple petition after you've taken it. You would just remind us that uh, you needed that. If it's something that a lot of students are taking, we might even try to have the registrar automatically put it back onto the sheet or onto the computer system. Um, so just kind of be watching out for that. This is really especially true with any Global Studies Upper Division courses that would count in Area 2A. So that's anything besides 110, 120, 130, 199. Um, so if it's a Global 1 something something and it's not showing up on the sheet, very likely still counts uh, and you can take it and sign up for it with confidence. You just may not see it pop up automatically on your um, major in GE progress check. So just you know, kind of be aware of that. Uh, something else that is helpful as you're planning your schedule would be knowing that we have a Google Doc of Global 197 topics. So these are going to be special topics. Um, usually these are classes where they're smaller and taught by a faculty member who really gets to dig into something that they are an expert in. Um, they're almost more like small seminar style classes. But the funky thing about them is you will only see them on the schedule as Global 197 special topics and you would hate to sign up for a special topic and then realize that it's not something you're actually interested in and then have to try to change your schedule if it's not going to work for you. So this is a document you will want to check um, to see if we have already advertised, you know, who's teaching it, what's the topic. In some cases, I may even tell you that like particular 197, for example, one in fall 2020 was a repeat of a winter 2021. So if you took it back in winter, you shouldn't take it again this fall. It wouldn't count again towards your major requirements. So this is just kind of an extra little uh, resource to know what's going on with the global 197s in any particular quarter. One more other document I would recommend being familiar with and knowing that it exists, knowing how to get to it would be our additional courses by petition document. So this kind of becomes a long running document that I kind of just create a new set of boxes at the top of the document every quarter. And this is for um, you to see every quarter I go through the schedule and I try to pick out some classes that would be sort of like we can use these by substitute for certain students who might need something beyond what's already listed. Maybe you couldn't get into the classes that are listed. Maybe there was only, like in this case, for the Africa region and Area 3 upper division, there was only one class listed. But let's say maybe you needed, um, or I guess over on the main, main requirements, um, there was only one class listed, but you need two in order to graduate on time. So this would be a way to find um, other classes that are not officially approved on the sheet, but they still would count because they're fulfilling very similar types of requirements. So we can take them by petition. This just kind of helps you find those a little bit faster uh, rather than having to go searching for them and then running them by the advisor to get approval for them. So if you see it on the sheet and if you see it approved in that specific place where it's been mentioned, you can take it with confidence and know that we would accept it. Um, if we're not sure, I will try to leave a little note, especially if it's such a new class that we haven't even seen it, we haven't been able to evaluate. And in that case, just save the syllabus. We should be good. Um, big, another big question that comes up a lot, what if there's no space in my preferred course, choice, course choices by the time I'm enrolling, maybe everything filled up or something was super popular. Um, that's where you want to think first, can I be flexible and take something else? So just work on a different part of my degree requirements. Um, what else in my major in GE progress check is showing up as not complete? Maybe I could focus on that and then save this course I really want to take for a different quarter when I'm more likely to get into it on pass one. No matter what, always enroll in enough classes to give you something full time in terms of your schedule, at least 12 units. Uh, and then there's you know, never any guarantee that space can open up later if a course is truly full, but there is often the chance that people will drop during week one. So that's where you can already have a full schedule and then you can make changes, which is much easier to do and much more successfully done if you've already signed up for some classes rather than just not enrolling in anything and then hoping that things will open up in time for you to start taking classes. 
Now, something that is new, this is something that is new for fall 2020, is we are going to be beginning to start using the gold waitlist system. So if you are familiar with that with other departments where you've taken classes, you can, there's a button you can click when you're signing up for classes on gold if they're closed, or you can get on a waitlist. Now, a lot of these waitlists are first come, first served. Ours will not be, it will be prioritized by um, unit standing and by major, which means if you're a senior global major, your priority on the list would be weighted heavier than somebody who's a, let's say a freshman in another major who just wants to take it because they're interested in the topic. Ideally, we could get everybody in, but if there's truly not enough space in the class, we would have to prioritize our seniors in the major who need the class on time to graduate. And then we can start looking at you know, juniors in the major that would like to get ahead or um, people in other majors who are taking it just kind of for fun or for a double major or for um, something on their own major requirements that also uses global studies classes. So more information will come up about that as well along with sort of the process and the troubleshooting for what to do if you are waiting or trying to figure out what your status is on the wait list, um, but just be kind of watching out for that. What if I'm not declared in the major yet, but I'm interested in changing my major or adding it as a second major? What do I do? What do I sign up for? And also, can I declare my major right now? Uh, in a lot of cases, you don't want to try to change your major immediately, right? When you're trying to start re registering for classes, you can get the process started, but you cannot count on the major changing in time for week one, or I'm sorry, for past one of um, reg any registration quarter, if you have not already declared the major several weeks prior. Reason is, is it just takes a really long time for the Office of the Registrar to receive and then actually approve and finalize and change your major on gold. Sometimes for some people it's even taken most of a quarter, especially during um, like our working from remotely times, right? Because there's just a lot more email to deal with and so just kind of be ready for that. Um, more information if you do want to start thinking about changing your major, we do have a link to a video on our YouTube channel. I would recommend watching the whole thing if you have not thought about the global major yet and you would like to get some information about it. But just like the other one, you can also click through the different um, time spots within the video if you have a specific question. Now something else to know is we block on Pass 1 for most department courses to make sure that our people already in the major get what they need to graduate on time. So if you are a non-major or you might have changed your major recently, but it hasn't officially changed on gold, you want to try to sign up on pass two. So fill your schedule with other things in pass one and then try for pass two as soon as your pass two opens and then try for pass three if pass two doesn't happen. And then at that point you can think about um, or as soon as the waitlist opens on gold, you can get onto that waitlist and see how things go during week one of the quarter. Space pending. Um, there's also some just some reminders about how to get to the specific videos on our YouTube channel and then some specific points within each of those two videos for suggestions if you're in this situation where you're thinking about changing your major but the timing has crossed over with when you need to register for next courses class, next quarter's courses, and you're not already in the major. Um, over here, we've just got kind of some reminders of resources for other information about the major uh, that will probably affect your schedule planning at some point. This is another, just another link to that same document with the additional courses by petition. We do also have a lengthy YouTube video talking you all the way through the foreign language requirement. That's a really, really common thing people have questions about. Uh, so if you have a question about that, I recommend starting here in this video. Uh, you can, again, you can watch the whole thing or you can skip to the different points that answer the questions specifically you have about your situation. Um, but definitely look at that if you're not sure if your foreign language requirements taken care of yet. Uh, also, this is a handy tool. So a question we might get is, will whatever global class you're looking for be taught in a future quarter? So this would be a very tentative, but you know, still generally on track with what we're thinking um, spreadsheet that will tell you in each quarter, for example, this is 2020, 2021, this will tell you generally in each quarter which of the core courses and then which of the upper division elective courses will be taught in which um, quarter. So this is still subject to change since I first leaked this onto the website. We had about three different classes change quarter in terms of when they'll be showing up. These are just a couple of reminders to things to keep in mind about using this information and how it can help you as well as what are the limitations on this information. But this is nice, right? You can verify when certain classes are gonna come up in the schedule so that if you're trying to figure out when to take certain things across certain quarters, you have a little bit of a resource. 
there's our reminder also about the 197s. So um, step three over here just kind of helps you think about other things besides global studies classes. If you're looking for things like electives, I would also say GEs. These are a couple things to remind you. There's the advanced search feature of bold, which you can use to filter out specific things you're looking for in classes. Maybe even just you're looking for classes that are still open. You're open to anything in any department. You just need something that will give you um, a class to put in your schedule. Anything, right? Any of these different search terms, you can use that in advanced search. There's also a link to the general catalog where you can look up somewhere maybe i'll just get over here you can actually look up the approved uh, list of each te area that will tell you like what classes count for that and then you can search within that this is especially useful if you're trying to take classes that fulfill more than one you know maybe a major requirement as well as a ge so that is kind of the one list where you can be sure that you're looking at um, confirmed classes that will work for those requirements and there's kind of some other links. So this is some information about our crash policy. Updates will be coming on this information for fall 2020 and beyond, just keep that in mind. Um, and then our overall course catalog for global studies. This is just a way to kind of look at every course that has ever been taught in our department. So if you want like a longer description for some of these classes, or you want just one place to look up every single class that has come up in our department, um, especially if you're looking at this list and you're wondering what does global 155 mean uh, there it is right um, the professor could very well change but at least the topic will be pretty close to what you can expect and then down here there's just some general information it's always worth repeating about what to do if you still have questions or if you feel like you want to reach out to somebody we have our main undergraduate advisors email by the time um, the 2020 to 2021 school year gets underway. There will be some other updates here about other ways to contact and get information uh, about your questions, big and small, that you might have. Uh, and some other updated links, like the uh, appointment link will change slightly. So if you're looking at this on the YouTube video, just know when you actually go live on the website pretty soon, uh, you'll see things that are a little bit different here. Okay, so that was just a quick tour of our registration resources page. Again, global.ucsb.edu slash undergrad slash course registration, your one-stop shop for any questions you may have about the process of registering for any of your quarterly classes. Thanks for watching. Please reach out if you have further questions after um, taking a look at this part of our website.